Welcome to the Faroe Islands, a small North Atlantic island community where sheep dot the landscape and far outnumber the people. Sheep have formed and secured life here, and wool and knitting have always been an integral part of society. The Wool Islands is a celebration of wool and knitting in the Faroe Islands. These five people celebrate their Faroese heritage with their passion for wool and knitting. In their own different ways, they have devoted their professional lives to this passion. A modern miniature nation, the Faroe Islands and its capital, Taoshan, may try to match their European sister nations. But the tie to the past is visible, and past traditions live alongside modern ones. We are Gurun and Gurun. We are a small yet international fashion house specialized in hand knit. We strive to bridge uh, tradition with contemporary design. My name is Johanna Austeinum. I'm a knitwear designer from Torsan. Um, I have a label called Steinum. Uh, my label is kind of characterized by using a lot of color, being very playful. And I have a shop here in the heart of Torsan called Ulverhuse. My name is Beinta and I'm the designer behind Einstacht. The brand Einstacht is minimalistic, Nordic and feminine. The meaning of the word Einstacht is unique and that's exactly what this brand is all about. We are located in Örström by the harbour in Torsau. My name is El Christian and I'm the founder and owner of Navia. I'm the fourth generation working with uh, wool here on the Faroe Islands. Uh, here at Navia we treasure the Faroese wool and we use the Faroese wool as the main raw material in many of our yarns. We produce a wide range of hand yarns such as 100% Faroese wool yarns to inspire the customer to create and knit from this wonderful organic material. My name is Cisal Kishansen. My label is Shisa brand, it's a knitwear brand based here on the Faroe Islands, where everything is made locally by local people. Um, the voice of my brand is bold, edgy and very much sustainable. Uh, I have a shop in Torshan called Ulverhuse, where you can find my goods. These modern and creative brands all build on a long history of working with the wool as the Faroese people have been knitting and exporting the knitting for at least 450 years. The sweaters and socks were knitted in the farmstead in the Rojstova, which is the central part of the house. Here the entire family would take part in working the wool. The men would spin the wool ready for knitting, which the women would do, and sometimes the kids would also take part in this job. When they were old enough, they were taught how to knit. After they'd finished all the goods for export, it was time to knit for themselves. So from the 1st of December until the 23rd of December, the household would knit everything that they would need from undergarments to coats and jackets. After centuries of an agricultural life where the sheep represented income and knitwear was the main export, there was a shift in society. The knitting and the wool didn't lose its importance entirely. Now, knitting was for, uh, for own use. The women at home knitted uh, sweaters for their men who, uh, and sons who went to, to sea, and also mittens that they could use when they stood with their long lines. And um, the jumpers were um, knitted with uh, patterns in them so that they were extra thick and extra warm. The seaman's sweater's popularity with its many patterns has endured through history. In the late 1800s, the men went to sea for the whole summer, without any connection back home. The women back home could only look to the horizon to see when the sloops were returning. The story goes that the patterns of the sweaters were so significant that the women could 
actually see on the patterns rather than the faces of their men if their loved ones had returned safely. Although knitting patterns and knitting designs have changed over the years, Fairway's knitting was never really high fashion until recently. The starting point for the sweater was my father's Sima sweater. I explored it and started to scrape off from uh, many patterns to one pattern, from many color to two color, from a high neck to a crown neck. And then I changed the sleeves to raglan sleeves, all to make it more feminine. I really wanted to make the sweater suitable for the urban woman. We have no physical evidence of the earliest knitting on the Faroe Islands, but we do have written records from Norway Bergen that show that in 1567 there were ships on the Faroe Islands that traded 25 meters of canvas for 20 woolen socks. Winters in the middle of the North Atlantic Ocean can be tough for the sheep. The 17th century had particularly severe winters where a large part of the sheep died, bringing unbelievable hardship in terms of lack of meat and wool. We often refer to fetless iron, the years when we have this phenomenon occurring, because we have in uh, a little more than a century, from 1602 until um, the beginning of the 17th century, we have this phenomenon occurring nine times when the largest part of the sheep population dies out. But the Faroes were resilient and ready to find new solutions, even across the ocean. 1602 was um, a particularly bad year for the sheep on the Faroe Islands. A large part of them died, so we had to import new ones. And we went to Iceland and Shetland Islands to get them. And uh, we went looking for sheep with um, more wool, because um, a few years earlier the Faroes had acquired the art of knitting. So um, the amount of wool on each sheep had value. And we also went for um, sturdier sheep that could uh, last during the winters. The sturdy sheep which were brought to the islands with their thick layer of wool became a fair wheeze breed which adapted to the new environment. The Faroe sheep is living um, wild, more or less, but not that wild that uh, it comes and visits us a few times during the winter time to seek for feed. Uh, most of the herds are living in the mountains and they're grassing in the mountains. And when there's too much snow, we as humans take care of them and provide them with uh, necessary feed. When the sheep are shorn, their fleece is divided into five distinct color groups and one additional mixed color. The resulting yarn colors may vary from year to year. Several years ago, I could see that there was a lot of ferrous wool that was thrown away or just burned. As a sheep farmer myself, I couldn't stand on the sideline and just do nothing. So we started to collect wool from our local area. This work continued and ended up in a cooperation between Navia, the ferrous government and Bunarstorm. The goal for this uh, cooperation was to build up a wool terminal in the Faroe Islands. Now this wolf terminal has been operating successfully for over five years and now we have a more sustainable solution for the Faroese wool. Once a year, by the end of June or beginning of July, we farmers go into the hills to gather all the sheep, take them down to the sheep house where we shear them. The wool has been graded, packed, and sent off for production, reduced into knitting, yarn. So really what we're talking about is a close tie between sheep and man. The fairways wool is double coated. It has a very soft inner wool and longer and more coarse outer wool. Normally when we make yarn, we mix it all together, but in the theory, we could get actually three different yarns. For me, the Ferris wool is amazing. Uh, it speaks to my aesthetics. It's almost as it has its own language. 
Uh, the amount of outer hair in the ferrous yarn makes the garments that you make more long-lasting. Uh, it protects you from the weather, hence it's perfect as an outerwear. It is uh, still quite comfortable, good-looking and very much sustainable. The patterns used in Ferouise knitting were collected in the 1920s from knitters in the different villages and made available for future generations in a book of 125 patterns. These patterns are part of the Ferouise heritage and are cherished even today. In the Faroe Islands, we have a vast heritage of patterns. Um, there were even legislations against like how many stitches could be knitted between every float, what like density you had to have, and what colors to use, um, and so forth. But uh, for me, I just I see pattern everywhere. I do love using those old pattern books, but uh, the fun part for me is mixing the old with my own patterns and patterns that I might find abroad and kind of the fusing between pattern and colour is the most fun part for me and the possibilities are endless. There's so much history in the knitting tradition here on the Faroe Islands and in our brand we would like to keep this tradition alive. We use a lot of hand knitting and um, we get inspired by the old fairies' patterns. Sometimes we use them as they are, and sometimes we mend them a bit into our own. On the Faroe Islands, farmers have decided to keep the different colors and breed for the different colors. And especially the brown and the gray are interesting because they have so many different nuances. And depending on what wool we get every year, that makes the color of the year. Dark brown, or Mishka Moret as we call it, is my favorite color. But I do have a soft spot for light brown, Lyosa Moret. Uh, only 10% of the fairest collected wool is light brown, so it's the most unique of them all. Art reflects society, its values, what is important, and what affects its life. At the Faroese National Gallery of Art, the landscape, the ocean, and the ever-present sheep color the canvas of the visual arts. Wool and sheep are recurring themes, both in paintings, sculptures, and weaving. But wool is also used in interior design and to improve a room's acoustic quality. Here I chose to make something that was uh, tone in tone with the walls of Hotelferia, which is raw concrete and made kind of a abstract mist or a fishing net or something of the like and put it up against the walls so that you have this kind of interplay between the hard and the soft. So what is in store for Faroese wool in the future? I believe that the future in the Faroese wool business is bright, but to fully utilize its full potential, we need to increase the demand by focusing on new and more innovative solutions here on the Faroe Islands. But we must never forget, consumers today have a high demand for sustainable, natural products. And with that, the Faroese wool has a great potential. First of all, we have to make use of more of the fairways wool. A lot of it goes to waste. Secondly, we have to extend the life of the goods made of virgin yarn. We owe it to our past and to our future to utilize the natural resources that we have. And on the Faroe Islands, that is wool. Knitting is such a great part of our culture and our history and heritage. And we are such great knitters here on the islands, so it will be the most natural thing for us to utilize the wool in knitwear. But still, wool goes to waste. And it's a terrible shame, both for the environment, for the wool, for our culture. And that is one of the reasons why I have devoted myself to the fairies wool, and I try to make sure that fairies wool is part of all the garments that I make.